Hello and welcome back, guys. This is Ibrahim Qureshi here, and uh, welcome to the final session on module three, which is cloning. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Ibrahim Qureshi. I've been te uh, teaching VMware virtualization. Um, I have uh, done a tutorial on six point seven. You can check that out. There is a playlist uh, which you will find uh, on my YouTube channel. And uh, we are now doing the session three of uh, cloning. Um, if you do like my videos, please feel free to uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell for all the new updates. And you can also reach out to me on Twitter at Ibrahim Qureshi. And be sure to check out my blog, which is agileops.co.uk. So let's get into today's module. Before that, this is what we have covered. If you haven't seen all the other modules, make sure you go back and check the other modules um, so that you understand the entire concept if you're new to VMware. Now we are finishing the last topic of module three, which is clones, which is in red here, as you can see. And then we'll be starting the module four, which is storage. It's a very important topic for VMware virtualization. Storage is a core component of virtualization. Uh, so be sure to subscribe to get all the updates and notifications for, from me. So what is clone? Clone is cloning a virtual machine creates a virtual machine again that is a copy of the original. It's literally a copy of the virtual machine. It's like literally copying a file and making a duplicate of the file. So it's how uh, the si so the same concept applies on cloning. We extend that everything, every single software which is in there is copied. So as you can see, uh, the new virtual machine is a, a is configured with the same virtual hardware, installed software, and other properties that were configured for the original virtual machine. That also means that the amount of CPU which you assign for the original virtual machine will be the same. The amount of memory, the disk, and everything else. If it was thin provision, it will be thin provision. Uh, if it was thick provision disk, it will be thick provision. Um, so it's literally a copy of the virtual machine now, which leads to one uh, question. So if you clone a machine, which is from production, be sure to untick the network. I think VMware is doing that by default. It's untaking the network because if you bring it online, uh, uh, clone a virtual machine from production and bring it online, then you already created a problem for yourself. You have you know, forward on the same machine which has the same IP again. Uh, so it's literally to a point where you you can create problems in your network. So be sure to be very careful when you're cloning machines. Make sure you untick the network. But I'll show you when we do the demo anyway. So there are three options when we do cloning. The first one is, of course, clone to virtual machine. That means you will be cloning this virtual machine to another virtual machine. The second option again is clone to a template, which means you're cloning this virtual machine and making it a template. This is quite useful when you have created a gold template and you configure all your softwares and we have done templates in the previous sessions. So basically we used, we used this option. Um, well, to be honest, we didn't use this option, but we used the option to convert to template rather than clone to template. Okay, so but we can actually use a VM which is running and then clone to template and then make a template from that particular running VM. This also makes sure that the VM which you are running doesn't need to be powered off. If it's a production VM, you wouldn't want to you know power it off or anything like that. So that's when you use that. Because for existing VM, if you want to convert it to a template, you need to have that VM powered off, right? So that's why. So the last no, final option is clone as template to uh, to library so we have a content library uh, which has been um, obviously introduced in 6.7 I guess but obviously from version 7 it's going to be used heavily so it's, it's a new concept if you haven't used it before but you can have it in content library and you can share it across different v centers which makes it easy rather than you know duplicating the template everywhere copying across so you have a single template and then you can have version control on there and you can see like who has been modifying it and all that. So it's super easy. It's super interesting as well. 
and this is how we do it basically we right click on this particular vm in my scenario i have selected the jump o2 and then we go to clone and you see the option three options which i mentioned to you before which is virtual machine clone to virtual machine clone to template and clone as template to library okay so let's dive into our demo um as you can see I have logged into my vCenter and we will pick a machine which is already running. So, say for example, I will take the example of this Negios Core which I have been using in the last time, uh, use, which I have used last time as well, purely because it is only 10 gig. So, it's not a, a heavy machine um, and it's, it can be a really good example. Well, we have other machines we are we have here which are powered off but I want to show you an actual machine which is powered on so that's why let's use that and then we go to clone and then we say clone to virtual machine or clone to template or then clone to template clone as template to library so I don't have a library set up at the moment so let's say we just want to clone it just clone it to virtual machine so do that give a name so I would call an Nagios monitoring server, NMS maybe, Python 01, just basically click next. Again, obviously from the point of view of compute, you need to select the ESX host. You could select the cluster and then select a shared storage. Now what I want to do, obviously to speed up the process, I have NVMe memory and it is having 300 gig free. 10 gig is not a big deal so i'm going to use this second host which is my intel nuc um, and then stick it on nvme now at this point you can customize if you wish to and change the ip address um, and if you're using it for production i would say you should do it um, or you can just say you know finish at this stage uh, let's zoom out here let's continue There you go. So you you can either click finish, uh, click next, and finish this, or you can do some customization if you wish to. So I have covered customization in the previous sessions. Um, so be sure to check it out. It's simple as uh, I could potentially show you here. Why not? Right. So select customization of operating system. Click next. This is a Linux server. Next, and then all I'm going to do is because I have already got my customization, I'm going to assign an IP. Six, as an example, and I have set my uh, subnet and gate already, and then next, and that's about it. Finish, and then this is going to be cloned. It's ten gig, so I would imagine it should be done pretty quickly. As you can see, NVMe power of NVMe is just literally going to take a couple of seconds. There you go, and your VM is done it's been created and let's uh, look at some logistics here of our investment in the nvme so 11 32 i started 36 second at 36 second and it was completed at uh, 11 51 pretty much 15 second it took to create that vm okay so where is this vm then it was name nms O one, one there you go this is our vm it's quickly powered on and we start pinging it and i think i have given it an ip address called point six ping dot dot one dot six find out of course it's booting still Boot. There you go. I think one thing we need to check when we clone, I think VMware is by default unticking the network. No, so it has selected the network. I think could be because we have done some customization on the network, that's why it has selected the network. If you are cloning the machine and you want to power it on, uh, it's a good practice to just basically before you power on, untick this box and click OK. So at the moment I'm going to select it, but that's 
that's how I, uh, that's what I was saying that you need to make sure you untick uh, the network and then hold on. Um, so let's go back to command prompt and you can see it started pinging. So that means it is running and it will do a second reboot now. No, it doesn't. And maybe it has done it already. There you go. This is your machine powered on and running. And if you do want to go and have a look, six, uh, where should it does to the Apache um, page? I hope. Again. I think the gateway just to check. Yeah, we can get to the gateway. Yeah, ring out as well, which is good. See whether it has picked up the IP address and it has 10.10.10.8. Ten dot, ten dot, ten dot sorry, 6 dot slash 8 x mon subnet. So it has picked up. Okay, that was a mistake. I was giving HTTPS, but it is just working on HTTP. So, and we are logged in. Guys, I hope you liked it. Uh, let's go back to slides. If you do want to practice this, and you do have um, uh, constraints on your it, like CPU and memory if you don't have enough memory you can always get in touch with me and uh, I will see what I can do for you guys I have got quite a few uh, people who have uh, used my lab and they have given me really good feedback they have learned a lot in a small span of time it's simple as you know you log in from your laptop to my jump server I will give you your credentials to log into my domain then once you log in you get your vCenter and then you get your uh, ESX host and some shared storage to play around and do all this stuff which I'm showing on my sessions so yeah if you are interested and you basically don't have enough memory on your server to create a VMware lab just email me and then I will see what I can do for you let's show you some references so this is the references I will put in the uh, description and question of the day today is when you clone and I spelled clone wrong <laughs> sorry about that when you clone a virtual machine does the IP change of the virtual machine when you simply excuse me when you simply clone it and don't when you don't uh, customize it I guess does the IP change yes or no let me know um, comment on below and let me know and um, be sure to check out my blog agileops.co.uk my twitter handle is Ibrahim Qureshi send, send me a direct message and say hello I would be happy to you know um, answer any questions if you have don't forget to subscribe like hit the notification bell to get all the new updates from me enjoy watching and keep, keep sharing cheers bye